case by about four hundred thousand dollars. So instead of getting twenty million dollars next year, we're going to get nineteen million six hundred thousand dollars next year, and that goes into effect the following year also. So we're talking about a total of eight hundred thousand already anticipated in loss in revenues from the racetrack over those two years. Yes, I have a, a question actually for the superintendent. Um, one of the things that we were able to do a couple of years ago was to store money for our community from the schools. And I know that they're always vulnerable because they're not required. Um, are you making any cuts to our music in sports this year? No, absolutely not. We made a commitment, and I said this previously, that we will continue our arts and music programs as they stand. Uh, what we're looking for is obviously cuts in terms of attrition. Positions that were filled by substitute teachers for the entire year then we have full-time teachers that will move into those positions. So it will um, kind of be a quid pro quo in terms of the savings. And uh, we should see uh, overall cuts of about 6% in non-personal areas, personnel areas. And we should see a savings in the area of about $3.5 million. As you can imagine, if we didn't provide the additional $8 million from the city side this year, many of those programs would have gone away again, or uh, full, full day pre-K would have either gone away or gone away in large part had we provided funding. But again, I know the superintendent who can speak for himself, but he's told me on a number of occasions, and the numbers uh, show that the full day pre-K has had such a significant impact on the education of our children that those who go through those programs in pre-K, by the time they get to the fourth grade and the seventh and eighth grade and, and on up into our school system, are already performing at a dramatically increased level over the children who don't. So it's something that we don't want to get rid of. And that's why we made a commitment this year to not take a step back. This is a huge step back that will affect us for generations to come. I assume that the resolution that uh, Councilwoman Anabi uh, authored a couple of months ago about uh, trying to get school psychologists and some of those other support steps up to the pre-cut levels from 2004, is that? Is that Un unfortunately, that has not been built in. But uh, you know, we will continue to look. We know how important our pupil support services are for our students, uh, but at this point in time, you know, looking at the uh, $3.5 million of cuts, it is a concern. I want everyone to understand also that we had expected revenues from the state that were cut this year, and we're talking about supplemental excess cost aid in the area of $3.3 .3 million that we had fully expected was cut. The additional $400,000 from VLT money was cut in this fiscal year. That's compounded by also being cut next fiscal year for an additional $800,000. The state restored $500,000 in supplemental excess cost aid. So if you take those figures, you'll see that we are actually short $3.6 million in expected revenue from the state. And that's really where our budget deficit is at this point in time, or that's the amount that we will cut. Actually, the, the early retirement incentive was offered by New York State, and every year we expect that we're going to hear about another one, but it doesn't happen. Can we uh, approach them? Do we seek no. out? No, it's, it's a statewide early a statewide. retirement. Now, one of the things uh, that you have to recognize is <coughs> under the way the state does their, their the buyouts for early retirement, if we don't say, what's the, the percentage, Jim? No, actually, actually the, the program got to a point where it was only a dollar the last month. We got to save a dollar? A dollar, yeah. It used to be dollar. significantly a yeah, higher percentage, only nobody could achieve it. So you would either take the buyout and retire some of the people who wanted to retire, and you really didn't gain those <coughs> savings to the level that they wanted us to, but you did it anyway because in, in the long run it helped you. Or now they've lowered it to a dollar and said, if you save anything, right. you can do it. We, we even talked about the possibility of doing our own buyout. I know this, the superintendent of schools did one last year for administrators and saved about a quarter of a million dollars. We talked about the possibility of doing that this year, but there really is no savings there because you also have termination pay. The number, in the long run, it makes sense, but in the initial year, it doesn't necessarily make sense. We're looking at those numbers too, but nothing since, yeah, nothing, nothing. Not that's right. It's it's more long term, which of course makes it worthwhile doing. And but with when the, we have the deficit we have, it doesn't make it worthwhile doing this. And with an early year. retirement plan, it, it costs. You know, you, you would have continue to pay the person's. 20% of the person's salary has a cost to the retirement system over the next five years. So there is a cost yeah. going forward for five years uh, on an early retirement plan. So you have to factor in that cost when you determine whether or not it, it's a benefit to the city. Yeah. 
that's why even if the state didn't do it, we looked into doing one of our own, which could be done, and it just, the numbers just don't work for us now. Okay. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you, and look forward to working with you all.